Here's a topic that you're going to see on just about every shift for the rest of your career. Yet many of us know very little about it. The topic? Penicillin allergy. Let's start with a case. You see an otherwise healthy 45-year-old male and make the diagnosis of community-acquired pneumonia. You decide to prescribe amoxicillin monotherapy. But just as you go to write the prescription, you notice the words penicillin allergy on their chart. You ask the patient what happened when they had penicillin. They say they were around 7 years old and treated with amoxicillin for an ear infection, and they think they developed a rash of some sort with no recalled history of hospitalization or serious illness. So what do you do with this patient? Before we dive into penicillin allergy, we should also understand a bit about allergy cross-reactivity. Penicillins are beta-lactam antibiotics, a class of antibiotics which also includes cephalosporins, monobactams, and carbapenems. All of the beta-lactams work in the same way. They kill bacteria by blocking an enzyme that essentially helps build the cell wall. Allergy to beta-lactams is usually mediated by the drug's side chain structure, not the core beta-lactam ring. So risk of cross-reactivity is determined by the side chain. And risk can be evaluated in practice by referencing a cross-reactivity chart, which are found easily online. Most cephalosporins are at an extremely low risk of cross-reactivity in penicillin allergy, and this low risk of cross-reactivity is due to different side chain structures. Okay, that's really all you need to know about the pathophysiology of allergy cross-reactivity when you're prescribing beta-lactams. Now, back to penicillin allergy. About 10% of patients will report a penicillin allergy. Yet, about 90% of patients reporting a penicillin allergy can actually tolerate penicillins with no reaction. So why is there such a high prevalence of erroneous penicillin allergy? Well, there's many reasons. Infectious exanthems are common in pediatrics. And by some unfortunate quirk of the immune system, infectious exanthems can sometimes be triggered by the administration of an antibiotic. Likewise, infection-induced urticaria is another common pediatric complaint that frequently gets mislabeled as penicillin allergy. So oftentimes, it's actually the infection that is producing the rash, not the penicillin. In other cases, common drug side effects like GI upset or diarrhea are erroneously labeled as allergy and end up on the chart. And other times, patients will avoid penicillin based solely on a family history of penicillin allergy, even though it's not an atopic disorder and a family history doesn't confer increased risk. And even in the case of true penicillin allergy, most people will eventually grow out of their allergy, usually after 5 to 10 years. So why does any of this matter? Well, penicillin allergy labels are harmful to patients. A quick look at the literature makes this clear. Studies comparing patients labeled with penicillin allergy to those without show that patients labeled penicillin allergic receive less effective antibiotics for their infections, have higher risk of developing infections like MRSA and C. diff due to alternate antibiotic use, have more expensive treatments and longer lengths of stay in hospital, and even higher mortality. Over the last several years, protocols have been validated to safely de-label patients at low risk of allergy. One useful point-of-care de-labeling tool, dropthelabel.ca, has been validated for both pediatric and adult patients. Another tool available on MDCalc, which estimates risk of penicillin allergy, is the PENFAST score. F for less than five years since the reaction, A for anaphylaxis or angioedema, S for severe cutaneous symptoms, T for treatment required. The more points, the higher the risk of a positive allergy test to penicillin. As a general rule, adults more than 10 years from receiving penicillin who report isolated cutaneous symptoms without recollection of severe symptoms or the need for resuscitation can be safely prescribed penicillin or offered an oral challenge dose. Children who had delayed onset rashes occurring more than two hours after a dose and lasting more than 24 hours without systemic or severe symptoms 
can also be safely prescribed penicillin or offered a challenge dose. When you look at adult and pediatric validation studies, approximately 5% of patients given penicillin using oral challenge protocols had a minor skin reaction. No serious adverse reactions or anaphylaxis were reported. So these protocols are safe and the risk of anaphylaxis is extremely low, likely comparable to baseline population risk. Of course, risk of anaphylaxis or serious adverse drug reaction is never zero, even in patients with no reported allergy history. Let's go back to the case. You discuss the low risk of penicillin allergy, as well as the prevalence and harms of penicillin allergy label with your patient, and the patient agrees to try your first-line treatment of amoxicillin for their pneumonia. They understand that they have a roughly 5% risk of a minor skin rash, and if this happens, they can stop the medication and follow up with a doctor. They also know that with any medication, there's a very, very rare chance of severe drug reaction or anaphylaxis. Your patient ends up taking the treatment with no reaction, and they inform their future care providers to have the penicillin allergy label removed from their chart. Let's recap the takeaways from this quick hit. Number one, most reported penicillin allergies are erroneous. 90% of patients who report penicillin allergy can tolerate penicillins with no reaction. Number two, Studies show that penicillin allergy labels are harmful to patients, leading to more expensive, less effective treatments, and also increasing risk of developing infections like MRSA and C. diff. Number three, protocols to safely de-label patients at low risk of allergy have been validated over the last several years, including dropthelabel.ca. The PENFAST score is also helpful for estimating allergy risk when you're delabeling patients. All right, thanks everyone for listening. I hope you've learned a little something about penicillin allergy, and I hope you consider implementing this into your practice, because it's helpful both to your patients on an individual level, as well as to your community on an antimicrobial stewardship level.